Hello everyone. In today's command tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the effect that land cover has on spotting and attacking ground units. Now, land cover in general is a relatively new feature to the command universe. It's a, an awesome feature because it really adds a neat little dimension to ground combat, especially air to ground combat. Uh, one thing I want to say is in my video today, I'm not going to be going into what happens if the enemy unit is moving because that's just going to increase the probability of detection. I'm also going to be leaving out the radar aspect, although trust me, trying to use a radar beam into a jungle is a tricky thing to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. First things first, you want to make sure that the scenario that you're running has land cover activated. So in this case, I'm the scenario editor. If I went to scenario features and options, you want to double check to make effects of terrain type enabled. Second thing is, how do we take a look at command land cover? It's pretty simple. If you go to the view option and click on land cover, and then the other thing I like to do too is go to map settings. I like to go to terrain type legend. I'll pull this off to the side real quickly. And last but not least, if you actually look at your mouse, it tells you exactly what kind of land is covered that your mouse is pointing at this time. So the good news is there's not like a thousand different varieties of land. And uh, the bad news is there are some varieties and they do make some difference. In general, and again, somebody's probably going to say in comments in about two minutes saying, well, yeah, this was a 10 minute video explaining something we already know. Well, sometimes it helps to see. In general, you have your forests, which are going to be very difficult to spot units in, but not impossible. You're going to have your open kind of barren terrain. Like I always like to go over to Africa, which I think has got a beautiful collection of different terrain types in it. You could also, of course, you know, go to the Middle East and all places in Asia. And then, of course, you have the weird ones, or weird ones, I should say. It's not that weird. It's uh, going to be urban built up, as well as your croplands. And, of course, you have your snow and ice and barren. Although, for the life of me, I have a real tough time finding this particular one, but I believe there's a little bit over here. So anyway, now that you know the different types and with the color coordination knows, I want to point out something really, really quickly. If you were to zoom way, 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 way in on a section of map, you'll probably observe that as the land cover starts to update, obviously it's taken a minute to do this, it will actually give you different land covers within each one of these little pixels of land covers. And we'll deal with uh, some complications for that in a minute. So anyway, let's take a look at what I've done with my scenario now that you've kind of seen how everything is. I've taken a bunch of F-16s. Uh, these are good old fashioned CM Block 52s. And I've placed them all around, uh, basically, you can see South America here. What I've done is I put them at a constant distance to an identical unit it on the ground. I've given them a standard order for climbing, standard order for descent, as well as how fast and how high everything has basically been built in to make this as even a scenario as possible. So what I wanted to demonstrate first is just how land cover affects the ability to spot targets. I'm actually going to shut this off for a second. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Go ahead and speed time up a little bit. And you start hearing dinging in a second. And I'm going to let that go for just a few more moments. All my F-16s are turning. Pause. Okay, so let's see what everybody found. I'm going to go ahead and close this out also because this is just going to get in the way real quick. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to go ahead and say new ground contact. So the first thing we detected, which is probably not a surprise, again, you're interested in distances, not the time, is this particular unit here. I'm actually going to flip this to God Eye mode. This is the unit who is in the woody savannah, I'm sorry, in the grasslands. And when you think about it immediately, you're going to go, well, grasslands is uh, you know, pretty obvious. Second unit, you'll notice it was detected almost simultaneously at the same level of detection as our grasslands was the wind, snow, and ice. Next level of detection, if you take a look, no surprise, is going to be croplands, which again, that's going to be a little different than mosaic. The next one, which was detected, again, this is all virtually at the same time, was wetlands. And then finally, of that group, the uh, last one that was detected was our barren. So you're going to notice all of these land types all have about equal as far as how easily they are detected. If we were actually to flip up the distances real quick, you'll notice that most of them were somewhere in the 4.4 to 3.3 nautical mile range. But again, you can see pretty clearly that as you started getting a little bit greener and a little bit more wooded, it took a longer time to spot the target. Whereas if you had something way, way out in the open, like in the grasslands here, this would affect it. Keep in mind spotting is affected by line of sight. So in a couple cases, you might have run into a situation where we just could not see the target that we were looking at. So that brings us to the three weird ones. Yes, I said three. I didn't say two. You're sitting there going, okay, what did he do? You'll notice this one took a little longer to detect. That particular one was in the woody savanna. And you'd probably think, if you had to guess, this is going to be R1 out in the woods here. This is going to be cropland vegetation mosaic. So this is where, if you want to imagine you're flying over, especially this part of the world, where you have enormous amount of croplands and basically trees kind of dotting inside of it. That's exactly what this is. Which brings us to this one. 
This one, no surprise, is your forested one. And there's different kinds of forest, and they have kind of a slightly different change. You'll notice that when we were looking in the cropland, we took us 3.2 nautical miles to detect the target. You'll notice when we were looking through the forest, it was half of that distance to detect the target. So that's a tremendous difference, especially if you're doing reconnaissance runs. So I mentioned three, and I only showed off two. You're probably going, well, what do you mean? Well, let me show you something real quick. Did you notice that there was a unit right here that nobody actually detected? It. Surprise! It's your urban one. This urban object, if whenever you have an urban environment, trying to hide a vehicle or a person inside of it is an easy job. My F-16 was never able to acquire this one, even though they flew directly over the top of it at relatively low altitude. So what I'm actually going to do real quickly to kind of finish up this thought is I'm going to grab my F-16. I'm going to tell him to fly directly to him, basically at minimum altitude, and see whether or not we can actually acquire it never ever acquires it even at minimum altitude. actually that is clearly not minimum altitude oh, where is it i gotta check the altitude local it's 417 feet go down there we go let's see if you can acquire him now there it goes check this out distance 1.2 nautical miles so you have to be tremendously close to spot an object in an urban environment so what else does land cover affect? Well, another one is going to be how fast a unit can move. I'm not going to demonstrate this, but just know that the more dense the terrain, the slower a unit will climb through it. Also, if you have something like a slope, a slope will also slow a unit down. Which brings me to my final point with this video today, and that's the impact that terrain is going to have on attacks. So let me go down here real quickly. So what I've done is I've set up a group of A-10Cs. They're all basically equipped exactly the same way. They're carrying CBUs, and they're going to try to dent up these different units. One of these units is a group of 12 M113s that are hiding in the woods. There's another one hiding in the savannah, which you remember was kind of open. And of course, we have one hiding in town. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up real quickly so you can get a general feel for what this is going to look like. Here we go. Oh no, I hate it when I do that. You have to actually tell them to attack or they don't attack very well. Who knew, right? Let's go ahead and grab these guys. Oh, there we go. Ah, we haven't acquired them. There we go. Bingo. Attack that one. Attack that one. Attack that one. All right, let's try that again. Sorry about that. All right, zeroing in. Here we go. CPU's away. Unpause. All right, check it out. You can see that our unit who was hiding in the woods lost a lot of vehicles. It's all, all the way down to two out of 12. The one hiding up here in the savannah, same situation. The one hiding in the urban environment actually did pretty well. So uh, we'll take this one step too far just to kind of give you an idea. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab my A-10s here. I'm actually going to replace them with A-10s that are carrying Mark 84s because I want to show you what happens if you use bombs as opposed to using um, CPUs, just so you can see what the effect difference is here. Again, this is kind of interesting stuff. All right, let me grab that, grab some Mark 84s. Uh, when's the last time we've used a Mark 84 and an A-10? I don't know. Everything's precision guided these days. All right, let's go ahead and pause. Okay. Let's order him to go here, attack, go here, attack, and go here and attack. All right, let's see what happens when we use conventional bombs versus CBUs for this particular purpose. All right, they're dropping down to low altitude. Here we go. <laughs> that was amazing. You'll observe that when we use conventional bombs, they had a better time of doing damage. Only the one got lucky over here hiding in the savannah. Both of those other units were basically plastered. So it's really important that you select the correct weapon when dealing with dense environments, not only to be dealing with the difficulty in detecting and engaging them. So again, I thought that was a pretty straightforward little thing there. Let's go actually see our total losses. I'm always kind of curious, you know. Let's take a look here. 12 Mark 84s, and we got 35 APCs. Man, that is a that, that's a good day. That's a good day. All right, so hopefully that helps you uh, realize a little bit how land cover can help you. Actually, one more thing, one more thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, usually I don't edit because it just saves a little bit of time. Let me show you one more quick thing. I'm sorry. Uh, one really thing I really, really like to take advantage of when I design scenarios with land cover is to take advantage of the fact that I can use the land cover at such a small scale. It gives me the ability to place units in places that make them extra irritating to attempt to engage. I'm going to go ahead and clean that out. I'll zoom out for just a second as that kind of redraws real quickly. Anytime. There it goes. Okay, cool. So for example, if I had an engagement that was going on in here, I know that I could do something like coming over here and placing, let's say, let's grab a facility real quick, something I want to protect very, very carefully. I could say, let's say I'm hiding a bunch of BMP2s, for example. 
and then I've noted, like, for example, over here in this part of the town, you know, I'd sneak in something that's extra irritating as ESU 23, for example, I do from the DDR. And then if I want like the trapping target, I could come out here to the croplands and go like this, and I could put something nice and obvious that seems like an easy thing for them to engage. T-55, put that right there. And then, of course, right next to the T-55, in the hard to detect location, I'll put in an SA-15, for example. And then, of course, you could set the range of this F to A15 to, like, this wide. So the moment that the enemy is like, oh, a freebie on this tank, it will never see that SA15 before it's able to shoot up and basically knock them right out of the sky and then get chewed up and spit out by the uh, ZSU-23-4, which is sitting right over here in the dense part of town. All right. Hopefully this video is helpful. Again, uh, land cover is a great way to add an extra little dimension to engagements. Obviously, when you're dealing with things like oceans, uh, land cover is a slightly different issue because it's not really there. But believe it or not, radars are impacted by weather and sea height. So basically you create the terrain when the weather's not as good. Enjoy.